Welcome to Bright Book. Today, we're diving into the fascinating process behind the diesel fuel that powers trucks, tractors, and even some personal vehicles worldwide. Diesel production is a complex, step-by-step -step journey, beginning with raw crude oil and ending with clean, usable fuel. Stick around as we break down each stage of this journey from extraction to distribution in detail. Let's dive right in. Everything starts with crude oil extraction. Crude oil is a thick, dark liquid found in reservoirs beneath the Earth's surface. Using powerful machinery like offshore rigs or onshore pump jacks, oil companies extract this resource, which contains the raw hydrocarbons needed to produce diesel. Imagine each drop of crude oil as a mix of compounds waiting to be separated and refined. This crude oil is then ready for its journey to the refinery, but getting it from remote extraction sites to these facilities is an entire operation of its own. To reach the refinery, crude oil is transported via pipelines, rail cars, or massive oil tankers that travel across oceans. This step is crucial. Refineries are often far from extraction sites, but strategically located near industrial areas to serve as fuel hubs. Imagine a pipeline that stretches hundreds or even thousands of miles, efficient but vulnerable to natural elements and strict maintenance needs. This journey ensures that refineries have a steady supply of crude oil, keeping the refining process moving. Once the crude oil arrives, it undergoes its first major transformation, distillation. Picture a giant tower heated to about 350 degrees Celsius. The crude oil is pumped into this tower and heated until it boils, separating into layers based on boiling points. Here's the magic of distillation. Lighter compounds like gasoline rise to the top while diesel, which is a bit heavier, settles in the middle. This boiling and rising process is critical as each layer becomes a different fuel product. For the heavier parts, we use a secondary process called vacuum distillation. By lowering the pressure, we allow even heavier compounds to boil off at lower temperatures, maximizing the amount of useful product we can obtain. This process helps capture every possible fuel type from the crude. Once separated, the diesel fraction undergoes a crucial step, hydro treatment. This process involves adding hydrogen to the diesel in a high pressure environment to remove contaminants, especially sulfur. Why is sulfur removal so important? Because when burned, sulfur creates sulfur dioxide, a pollutant harmful to both air quality and human health. In hydro treatment, hydrogen molecules bond with sulfur and other impurities, transforming them into easily removable compounds. This cleaning step ensures that the diesel meets strict environmental environmental standards and burns cleaner in engines, reducing harmful emissions. Not all hydrocarbons in crude oil are ideal for diesel production. For those heavier ones, refineries use cracking. Cracking breaks down large hydrocarbon molecules into smaller, more useful ones. This process is like taking a big, bulky item and breaking it down into smaller pieces to make it more useful. There are two main types, catalytic cracking and thermal cracking. Catalytic cracking uses a special catalyst to speed up the reaction, while thermal cracking relies on intense heat. These techniques convert otherwise unusable heavy oil fractions into additional diesel, gasoline, and other fuels, maximizing efficiency and minimizing waste. Reforming is primarily used to improve gasoline, but it can also enhance diesel quality. This process reconfigures hydrocarbon molecules to increase energy density and improve combustion. While it's a smaller part of the diesel refining process, reforming ensures that the diesel we use is efficient, stable, and ready for demanding engines. By reworking the molecular structure, refineries produce a fuel that performs reliably and meets quality standards for vehicles and industrial equipment. Now, the diesel is nearly ready but it still needs a final blend. Refineries combine the treated diesel with additives that enhance its stability, prevent foaming, and improve its lubricity. Additives are a small but essential part of refining because they ensure that the diesel performs well under different conditions, whether in a cold winter or a hot summer. Think of additives as the finishing touch, small but crucial ingredients that enhance diesel's performance and longevity, ensuring it's ready for various applications. The final product is stored in large tanks at the refinery, waiting to be transported. Diesel is loaded into tanker trucks or pipelines for distribution to gas stations, transportation hubs, and industrial sites nationwide. 
This distribution step is a finely coordinated effort, ensuring diesel is readily available wherever it's needed, whether it's powering a truck on a long haul route or fueling machinery on a farm. Additional uses for diesel in the emergency power roll. Diesel engines power backup generators for essential services like hospitals, airports, and data centers. Their reliability makes them the primary choice for facilities that cannot afford power interruptions. In hospitals, diesel generators provide power for life-saving equipment like ventilators and operating rooms during outages. Disaster relief. Portable diesel generators are essential in areas hit by hurricanes, earthquakes, or floods where power grids are down. And it also helps data centers. Diesel ensures continuous operation for servers housing critical global data. For example, cloud services, financial systems. And there you have it, the journey from crude oil to the diesel that keeps our world moving. Thanks for joining us at Bright Book. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights into science, industry, and technology. Until next time, stay curious and stay informed.